highly functioning cruising sailboats are truly a work of art. They require so much time, effort, knowledge, and organization if they're to effectively do their job for thousands of miles of rough seas and hard use. There are so many systems that must work in harmony, and it's only a matter of time until every single one of them stops working. Yep. So the effective cruising sailboat needs regular maintenance and improvements if it's going to stand up to the difficult task ahead. Sometimes this is accomplished by tackling massive projects that have huge effects on our lifestyle. But most of the time, this is accomplished by incrementally putting in the work, one small project at a time over the course of years. Now, one of the best things about sailing long distances is that you get to do that work in some pretty cool places. And last week, we spent some time getting to know this unique country. But now it's time to get into project mode, so that come spring, Atticus will be ready for another season of heavy sailing. We have never actually left on time. This is definitely something that needs to change. Oh my gosh, that's soft, dude. Yeah. You want to test with the light to <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Demarin here in Turgatrace, Turkey. Now we are going to be here in Turgatrace for a total of four months, so the better part of the winter. And today we are going to be starting boat projects. So my very first project that I wanted to get started on would be a project that would help me with the rest of my projects for this entire winter. And that is dealing with my tool storage. Now one big issue with buying a boat that you are going to be sailing long distance on, that you're going to be living on full time, is that boat builders are incentivized to design the interiors of boats so that they will sell at a boat show. So most of the incentives for boat designers is to make an interior that looks spacious and that looks like it would be a lot of fun to live on. And that often comes at the cost of storage space because storage space is not sexy, but storage space is what you want to be happy living on a boat for years at a time. But particularly the issue with tool storage is that I wanna be able to access our tools relatively quickly because when a project springs up, I'm more incentivized to do it if I can get the appropriate tools quickly. So I wanted to once and for all create a tool storage system on the boat that would not look that bad. It wouldn't take up a lot of our living space, and yet it would allow me to get to whatever tool I need relatively quickly. I mean, of the space that we have on this boat, a huge part of the living space has been taken up by my tools. Now, you may remember that this happened because we had tools stored real deep for a while, but that was a problem because every time a project cropped up, it would take me way too long to get tools. Then we just kept all of my tools in the quarter berth and that became my workshop. And honestly, that was pretty awesome. But then we had a baby, so that kinda <laughs> went out the window. And so since Isabella has taken over the quarter berth, I've had all my tools right here taking up the port side settee. So yeah, this is definitely something that needs to change. So I've been doing quite a bit of research and I feel like I have a pretty good plan on what to do with all of this. So this is my solution and it's these Bosch nesting toolboxes. Basically they're all completely connected to each other and to disconnect one on the top, you just gotta push the side. It comes out real nice and easy. To click it together, you just push it on and it's connected. So the next step is gonna to be to go through all of my tool bags and to start to organize them, categorize them, and put them into these boxes. Are you helping dad? What'd you got there? You got a tool? Nice. What you gonna do with it? You gonna, you gonna eat it. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Okay, we did it. So this right here is pretty much everything that was taking up this space. What do you think, buddy? Big improvement. Yeah, we'll actually get to sit there, which would be crazy. Yeah. I love it. I am excited for when this is clear. Yes, I have a plan for that. The other great thing about these boxes is that I can install these metal brackets that the bottom box can click into so that the entire stack ends up being attached to the settee. And the brackets come with this tie down strap so the whole thing becomes super secure. All right, well, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I mean, we have our settee back. Like, I'm able to hang out here, watch TV, chat with other people, and yet take that cushion away. And uh, it's got the strap on it so that, I mean, when this is tight, 
this can't move even a little bit. It's super secure. So yeah, I love this system because I can easily access the top two boxes, which are the ones that I use the most. And then if I need to get to the ones below that, I can just take the top ones off. The whole system is really, really awesome. Our solution is actually kind of a two-pronged approach. We've got those toolboxes for the majority of my tools and for most of like the specialized tools. But for the tools that I use day in, day out, I actually got this Vito Pro Pack. And the idea is that this thing is gonna be my tool grab bag. My goal with it was to make a bag that 90% of the time, the tool that I need is in here. Now, not only is this bag really cool, it's actually a marine bag. It's the MBMC. So the bottom is like a non-scuffing material and it's non-skid, so it's kind of like grippy. So it won't slide on the deck, it won't scuff the paint. And not only is the tool bag itself like a big part of my solution, but also the tools that I have. I actually bought some tools especially for this bag. And a lot of what I did is I bought Vera tools or Weira. It's like a German brand. I don't know how to pronounce it. They're kind of designed to be really compact, really small, and to accomplish a lot with a relatively small number of tools. So like this combo thing has like all these different bits. It's got a little screwdriver. It's got a little tiny socket wrench. So many things you can do with just this one set. Just so you know, I am not sponsored by Vera. and I am not sponsored by this tool bag company. I'm just very excited about, like I kind of decided that I was gonna go to war against our tool storage problem because I've just been so sick of that problem for so many years. And so now this one-two punch, I think that this is going to win the war. I'll let you know how it goes. So the next project that we wanted to tackle was a handful of aspects of the boat that would help us baby-proof the boat. Isabella has been sleeping in the quarter berth and there's nothing keeping Isabella from falling off the edge of the quarter berth. So again, after doing a lot of research, what we ended up finding, and actually on a Turkish website, was this retractable baby gate. Now it's probably pretty obvious to know that a baby is gonna try to crawl out of their bed and so we need something to keep them in. But we decided that with Isabella, we wanted to wait until there was an actual problem to solve before we implemented any solutions. So we have a lot of theoretical issues that we could solve with theoretical solutions but we're waiting to make sure that we actually have a problem before we make any modifications to the boat because otherwise we're gonna do way too much work and make way too many modifications and some of them are just gonna be unnecessary or not very efficient. And so this way we know exactly what the problem is, we come up with a solution that solves that as simply and quickly as possible and then we move on. Okay baby, you ready to get in your new bed? You're not falling off the edge ever again. You're never escaping. Oh, hi, this is your new room. I'm gonna lock you guys both in oh, there. Okay. okay, so we just do that, okay. Nice. And then push this button. Okay, try to get out. Nope, didn't work. Yeah. Can I like really try? No. I actually <laughs> didn't, it kinda. <laughs> oh no, buddy. Note to self, don't thrust yourself. Yeah, it's for a baby, it's okay. not for an adult. <laughs> <laughs> Give it your all, baby. Go Get on. in there, baby. Try to escape. <laughs> Make dad proud. Do you like it? Yay! Yay! Hooray! Yay! I want to take a quick minute to tell you guys about the sponsor of this week's episode, Babbel, one of the top language learning apps in the world. Yeah, so we've been in Turkey for a couple of weeks now, and I gotta say, with Babbel, I think our Turkish is definitely improving. I think my favorite thing about at least trying to learn as much as I can of a new language when I get to a new country is that feeling of confidence, and it really makes me feel a lot less like an outsider. But I think even more important is the fact that getting to know a new language helps us to form stronger relationships with the people that we meet. Good night, in Bakir. Good night, in Jordan. Nasılsın? İyiyim, teşekkürler. Sen nasılsın? İyiyim. Babel focuses on teaching practical, real-world conversations about travel, business, relationships, and more. All right, how do you say that? Do you say it like this? 
Okay, we did it, good job. Babbel has a few different subscriptions to choose from, including a lifetime subscription. And with summer just around the corner, if you start using Babbel today for just 10 minutes a day, you can be speaking like a local in time for your next vacation. So click the link in the description below or scan this QR to get 60% off your subscription. And let us know in the comments what language you'd like to learn. So as I kind of discussed in last week's episode, we have never in our entire sailing experience actually left from a place where we hunkered down on time. We're always delayed because we always get overwhelmed with projects. And so I've kind of talked already about how our big goal for this winter is to actually leave on time. One way that I'm hoping to do that is to not commit to too many projects, not overcommit. But the other way that I'm going to try to accomplish that is we're actually working with contractors to handle some of the projects that we want to do this winter. So we hired a mechanic to replace the exhaust elbow on our engine. As far as I understand, that was the original elbow. I have been told that those can suffer from pretty severe corrosion and you won't even really know it until you dismantle it. And so sure enough, the mechanic took off that elbow and there was a lot of corrosion inside. Like I was kind of amazed that it was still functioning and it wasn't causing problems already. Whoa, that's crazy. Now that elbow was a custom elbow for this engine bay. So we had the mechanic fabricate a new elbow, which works great, looks great. I'm super happy about it. And that's the kind of thing that it would have taken me a long time to dismantle it, to think about what to do, to design it and give it to a fabricator. So the fact that we had this mechanic just kind of bang that out in a week or two was amazing. We also hired a canvas team to make a new Dodger because the Dodger that we had was no longer waterproof. And so when it would rain really bad, it would rain down into the companionway. And I'm pumped because look at this, bud. Like our theory on extending this a little bit worked really well because what we wanted the last dodger you weren't ever fully protected by it like it would have been more like this right but with this we had it go a little bit higher and had the extension go a little bit further aft and now we can actually like sit with complete protection from a thwart ship. And it matches all the other canvas on the boat, which is kind of <laughs> nice. That was a little weird for a while. Yeah. We also had them make a sunshade that connects to the boom and can extend out to the lifelines. And that will shade a really large portion of the boat, hopefully keeping it a lot cooler in the middle of summer. We had the cockpit cushions made so that Isabella can be comfortable while we're sailing, but also because our old cushions were just looking terrible and it was time to replace them. Oh my gosh, feel that. Put, put your hand on that, Bakir. So that's softer than that's, that. That's soft, yeah. dude. So the other big issue with Isabella and sailing is that now that she's getting more mobile, we kind of need to be able to give her some independence, give her the ability to play on the boat while we're sailing and yet do it in a way where she's not gonna go overboard. We wanted to make it so that Isabella could play in the cockpit while we're sailing safely. And so we wanted to get padding for this area and like a little baby tether, like a harness, so that she couldn't possibly fall overboard even if the boat had some kind of a freak accident. So basically we've got this whole area padded with this new cushion that fits mm. perfectly. It's so snug. And then it has this removable side which we can either have oh, on the port side or over here so that when the boat's healed over she can really kind of like rest down here and not we don't have to worry about her like knocking her head or getting hurt and finally you may remember that we removed the sink that used to be in the v-berth and that's now where we have most of the components for the water maker. Well, that area that used to have a sink is just a totally worthless space. And so we decided to hire a carpenter to make a new storage closet in that area to help with all the stuff that we now have because we have a baby, right? This boat was absolutely perfect for Desiree and I. And then once Isabella came into the picture, we started having serious storage problems. So that storage closet is going to help a lot in keeping Atticus tidier and storing all the stuff that we have. 
So our next project reminds me of an article that I read from Andy Shell a long time ago. And he was talking about how when you buy an old used sailboat, you have to expect that everything but the boat itself is going to break at some time during your ownership. Now what happened to us not long after buying Atticus 2 is the oven stopped working. And I've been kind of researching how to fix it for years, trying to find the right parts for this, you know, 25 year old oven. And long story short, I just gave up. Like it's not worth fixing at this point. And so we decided to buy a new stove slash oven. Yeah, pretty exciting stuff, huh, Bozo? The big issue, and it's an issue that we run into with so many of our projects, is that the plumbing for the whole propane system is all American standard sizes and fittings. We spoke with a local contractor who said that he could probably find us an adapter that would solve our problem. And I was a little skeptical because in my experience, there just isn't a market for plumbing adapters between European and North American standards. Yeah, exactly. I've run into that problem. I mean, the other option is to get a European fitting with a hose barb and just cut that hose. Luckily, they were able to track down that exact hose barb that we needed the very same day. Wait, wait, wait, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> now this is a bit of a sketchy installation because you really want to avoid using simple hose barbs and hose clamps for propane connections inside of the boat because of the risk of leaks, which is why we will soon be installing a propane detection system just in case. But we also made sure to do the old school soapy water method of testing for leaks. No bubbles? Yeah. You want to test with the uh, light? light, light, light. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it, man. Let's live on the wild side. It's a t Turkish culture. <laughs> <laughs> hey. There you go. And everyone still has their eyebrows. I think that's perfect, man. Thank you. That was very good. Give me five. <laughs> yeah, Bakir. <laughs> Up high, buddy. Nice no, one. Man. I'm so excited about this oven. I've actually never owned an oven as an adult. I like cooking because I can kind of like taste things as they go and make sure they don't get burnt. But baking is kind of just like this really intimidating mystery to me. So I've got a lot of experimenting to do and hopefully in a year's time, I will not be as intimidated by all this baking stuff. But for now, I started really easy <laughs> with like a Turkish, just add two ingredients recipe. Okay, so bud, cookies are done. And they're interesting. Yeah. That's all set. You tried them. I think they I look like cookies. Right. I think I cooked them like perfectly. Oh, nice and hot. Uh huh. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, they're not very sugary. Yeah, like it's I... good though. Yeah. I mean, it's a cookie and it's hot. I'm very excited. Yeah. I'm so pumped that you just like we just <laughs> turned it on, put this in, and then it made this like yeah, hot, for sure. fresh cookies. Yeah. I'm sure most people go through this learning curve of learning how to bake a lot sooner in life, but mm -hmm. I, we just haven't had an oven for the longest time, so. Mm, yeah, roasts. Yeah. I'm so excited about roasts. Can you say thanks for getting us an oven, Dad? I think that's what she's saying. <laughs> <laughs> We are hauling out. A lot of things have to go right. Oh, whoa. There's a piece of plastic in the engine intake. I'm going to be replacing our heater. Uh-oh, there's another one. Okay, it is not running. I just get kind of anxious whenever this happens. Fingers crossed that that is the only unexpected thing that happens on this yard stay. 